Hey guys, so back by popular demand, I'm going to do um, a thorough walkthrough of my kayak fishing setup. Um, specifically how I set my kayak up for fishing a tournament, um, how I set my GoPros up so I can film and make my YouTube videos on my tournaments, um, kind of little tips here to help new kayak anglers, little things, little gadgets that you may not think of, and just a, just a kind of basic thorough rundown of how my boat set up, how I rigged it, why, why I put things where I do, and how it kind of makes it easy and efficient for me when I'm fishing tournaments. Okay, so let's talk about my camera setup first. Um, last year, I went ahead and drilled a yak track back here and had my 47-inch uh, tough pull mounted back directly behind me. So the issue I found with that is a lot of times um, my rods will sit back in my H crate. There's always a rod when in, in the field of view when I was filming, or it just was it was too close to me and it was in my way and I didn't like it. So Ram has this option. This tough track right here mounts right on the H-rail. So this mount, you can run anywhere you want on the H-rail of the Hobie kayaks. Um, and that gives you the ability to, to have any of Ram's mounting capabilities. Anything with a, a track mount can slide in and fit right here. So with the tough pull, um, since this one I run behind me, is 47 inches long. I like that field of view for tournament fishing. It's out of my way. I don't have to worry about it. I do the reinforced spline mount here. You can adjust this here, obviously here, and all the way up top um, to get the desired angle that you want when filming your tournaments. Out of sight, out of mind, you can worry about your tournament fishing. So when I'm filming, I've kind of gone over this before, I still use the old Hero 4s. I am in the process of getting an 8, so stay tuned for hopefully better content there. I use the Purple Panda lapel mic and the refuel battery pack. That typically gets me four and a half hours. I have to switch batteries one time, get back to fishing, so it's pretty um, non-intrusive. Other options are to mount an external battery to your GoPro. I've got a couple buddies that do that. I will probably switch to that system. Literally don't have to worry about anything. You're just tournament fishing. Don't worry about anything behind you. Your GoPro dying on you is not a concern. My lapel mic, I'll run down here, kind of put it through this here, and then it clips right here to my seat. Um, that usually picks up decent sound. It's not the best system, but it works okay for me. So moving to the back of the kayak, my H crate always sits here. I try to be as light as possible with my H crate. So I'm literally only taking things that day on you know, terminal tackle that I know I'm probably gonna be using during the tournament. I like to be as light as possible here. We got the classic power pole mounted on the back. The little micro power poles are operated with uh, a little handheld device that I'll show you in a second. Homemade safety flag, thank you Linda McWhorter. Um, this is a reflector on either side. Every kayak needs to have a safety flag. I just tuck it up and under the mount when I'm on the water, just like that. So let's get to over here. Um, life vest, couple of things that really help me when fishing tournaments. Um, I like to have an inflatable life vest. They just, they're more comfortable for me. Front pockets are huge. So here's my safety whistle. There's that power pull toggle. So one of my absolute favorite features here, this is that little Gerber retractable tool. This thing fits right on my life jacket, clips in, has a retractable cable right here. And what I did on my iPhone, that's gonna clip right there. This phone will fit right in this front pocket. And I don't have to worry about donating another iPhone to the drink anymore. So I can't tell you how many countless tournament anglers I've spoken to who have lost a phone. It is such a huge peace of mind. It pulls all the way out. You can take your pictures, not have any issues there. Added comfort, really like these kayak cushions. Um, they're out of, guys out of Tennessee, super nice too. When I'm on the water all day, these are pretty helpful. I'll even put one as a backrest. I've got two, so those are pretty decent. Let's talk about my electronics. 
So I've got the Lowrance HDS9 Live mounted here. Um, I like to have that pretty close to my seat so I don't have to reach for it. I've seen a lot of guys mount them here in the center. I like to have mine in the A-Trail, easily accessible. Um, I don't have to strain my eyes to look at it. And then I've got my little AquaView Micro Evolution 5 right here. So this is such a great tool aiding me in pre-fishing. This is like your eyes underwater deal right here. This thing allows you to really see what's going on underwater. You can see that the type of forage, the color of crustaceans, quality caliber of bass under a dock, um, what type of, of structures down there. Just a neat little deal. Um, I mount it right next to my seat so it's out of way. Um, a lot of people ask me what this little white puck is right here. This is my pinpoint point one GPS. Essentially what this does is when I drop a waypoint down, it'll tell me exactly where the bow of my boat is facing in relation to that waypoint. These things are $200. It'll be the best $200 you ever spend. Take my word on that. To talk about measuring board. So my Pro Angler 14 is 38 inches wide. That allows me to keep my measuring board flat on the floor. A little tip for beginners, always invest in a tourney tag. That holds your identifier, attaches it to the board, just like the cell phone deal. Uh, you don't want to lose that. So that keeps it there secure. You can slide it up and down in case you get that, that larger fish. Um, much easier to do. So little thing in a kayak, since you have a lot of rods in close quarters, these Calcos bait sacks are unreal. Um, I have a couple more over here. Let's go take a look at those. Crank baits, jerk baits. Having those baits in these protective little deals, they clip right under your rods, have a little line lock right here. Um, makes it so much easier to not get a crankbait caught up in a rod sleeve and another bait. You can pick those up at calcoastfishing.com. I'll try to put a link in the bio for those. Those save for kayak angler, for, for any angler, those things are a lifesaver. So let's go up here in the front hatch, the 360. This is typically where I'm going to keep all of my rain gear. And usually um, this, this suit is in a dry bag. I keep a dry bag up here. The dry bag is somewhere where I'm not able to locate it right now with uh, all the chaos. But also another thing I keep up here is my leader line. Um, that's, I don't use this a ton, but if I happen to break off, I've got all my leader line up here in the front hatch. Not too tough to get to. And then this center hatch here, that is where I keep. I used to got some monofilament for when I want a Carolina rig. Um, need a leader there. Uh, wacky tool. And, and then my high volume plastics. So anything for the tournament that I'm using um, that I know that I'm going to be rifling through, cycling through pretty quickly, that the hot tournament baits are going to be right in this front hatch here. My reserve plastics, if y'all watch my Plano video, you see these right here. Um, so the baits, I've got, I've got about nine of these. I've got big worm, finesse, drop shot baits, um, creature baits, lizards, so whatever stick baits. So whatever I'm using the most of, I can fit two of these plastics boxes under the front seat of my Pro Angler 14. So we'll talk a little bit about the uh, horizontal rod storage that the PA 14 has. Um, that is why I love this boat. Having horizontal rod storage is huge for me. So typically what I will do, um, I take anywhere from at the very low end eight rods to at the extreme end 14 rods on my kayak during a tournament. I can very easily fit six in this side and six on this side. Um, I'll keep my spinning rods on one side with a couple bait casters and the majority of the bait casters on the other side. Um, any extra rods, I can get four behind me in my H grade as well, but I typically like to have everything in these rod tubes down here so it doesn't look super cluttered. I've got one rod in, on either side right now, uh, just as I'm kind of organizing my gear. But we'll take a closer look so you guys can see the gist of this. All right, so I think that just about covers everything, um, at least the basics, kind of how I just set things up, how I store my gear, how I record my tournaments, electronics, um, mounting options, rod storage, tackle storage, you have it. This is just a very basic video. I've had a ton of requests to do this, so I thought I'd whip this out today um, while I'm practicing my social distancing. Uh, if you guys have any specific requests, specific questions, uh, going over rod and reels, anything I used in tournaments, breaking down water, y'all let me know in the comments. I think I'll have uh, plenty of time to put some videos out the next few weeks. So I appreciate y'all watching. Hopefully y'all have a chance to wet a line. 
Remember in all this chaos, hold your loved ones close, spend your time wisely, and take care of each other. Thanks, y'all.